side of the city. <laughs> Dude, I ran the street. <laughs> I had a good time taking drugs when I was out there using no why I'm positive. I take women and drugs. You know, I started using from 14. I was just wanted to be in the crowd when I was young. And once I put that needle in my arm, it was all over. I was hooked from day one. That's fast, man. I mean, I mean, I didn't chase it every day, but, but it, I loved it. During the next 28 years, I was a heroin addict. And then I had to try to figure out how to stop. I mean, I went to prison and I had to kick my cold turkey and I mean, after five years, I got healthy and knew I was strong again. I wasn't no going back out here chasing no more drugs. I was waiting for this to this day to come back. <laughs> so I could feel myself working on my own body. Always waking up in the morning chasing drugs every day. Up and down the street. From the time I woke up, I had on my mind, I got to go get my shot of heroin. Once I would come up here, if I didn't have the money, I had to hang around and try to hustle up the money. And once I got the money, I ran in one of these abandoned houses and did do my drugs, everything I carried on me. And, and, and just hope I didn't get locked up. Drugs wasn't in the neighborhood after Martin Luther King got assassinated. After Dr. King got assassinated and all the looting and robbing, what kept going on, seemed like then they brought in drugs to calm everybody down. That's what it seemed like happened to me. I was 14 years old when he died. And then all of a sudden drugs came to the neighborhood and the drugs was only a dollar. A dollar and everybody just started, you doing it. But half this city got burned down. Back up in the west side of Baltimore, behind looting and drugs, everybody had drug habits. And I see they finally started to do something. This is all abandoned buildings over here. They, they, they starting to redo them again. make the bill so high, crime going to be everywhere anyway. People living in that whole road. And hey, look at all that. All abandoned buildings. All of them everywhere. This just a start of something. Three floor apartments, I mean three floor houses. They were real nice homes. But if you let, like when the kids grow up and they get to chasing drugs and using it, they tear them down. If I had to, to say, what do I want people to know about Jox? I would want them to know that Jox is uh, an HIV clinic and program um, with incredible folk. And Jox has this mission to help people live well with HIV. But Jox has an awareness that it can't do it alone. And so <clears throat> Jox is all about connecting people. And today we have 500 volunteers, and it is a representation of what we believe in. If you're going to change a city, you have to engage the city. And today you're seeing engagement of a city. saying that earlier that talking to a couple guys they they knew they was positive already but they did just they just but I fell out of care and, and, and just tell them that I was positive they came in to get tested and try to get back in the care again so I mean that that, that made my day just a tough couple people so I know they needed it right they, then I sit out there and talk to two or three guys I, they, they kept it to themselves didn't want to say them. once I start opening up sharing they said, okay, I mean, say it too and go in there and get tested again. But I mean, that's why I believe we really need it. 
Well, now they probably need it, need it, need it more now. And I hope they make, continue to get it funded next year. So we'll see, I guess, come next year. Mm, yeah, we did pretty good dealing with the heat. But I think we did pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I didn't say, yeah, this ain't nothing.